Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie episode 213. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in tonight's live stream, what is the day today? October 13th, 2021. In tonight's live stream, I've got an impossible box for you. I may have bitten off more than I can chew. I do not have a card for you. I had a card in mind, but just ran out of time as usual. Uh, the kids had fall break this weekend, so I took Monday and Tuesday off from the day job, and that just threw off my whole week. But welcome. Let me say hello to a few of you. Hi, Amelia and Angela, Deborah, Lynn. Hello, hello. Oh, I love that, that you made the card from last week, Lynn. That's awesome. Thank you. Rosina, Minerva, hello. Michelle, Debbie. You guys are rolling in so fast. Hi, Penny. Hi, Miriam. Lala's Crafts. I love that name. Hi, Norlene. Hey, hey. Deidre. Welcome. Let's see. What am I forgetting here? Let me pop this up in the corner. I'm playing around with, um, I've got a new mic, so I'd love your feedback if you can hear me loud and clear. And um, new lighting, but I've got to kind of play around with it because it's really bright. <laughs> Um, always tweaking, always tweaking. So thank you. We went and picked out pumpkins yesterday. Nolan picked out a 36 pound pumpkin. My husband Brian is sitting right here. He's watching for your questions in the live stream. He'll pop those up for me. Um, oh, Sharon, welcome. Hi, Cindy. Uh, so, we, oh good, clear as a bell. That's awesome. Thank you, Salisa. Because I figure I move around quite a bit. So we're gonna try a lapel mic and see how it goes. Um, so anyways, Lily's was what, 26 pounds, 28 pounds, Nolan's was 36, Brian, they did a guessing game and I think he guessed so wrong they still gave him a coupon. <laughs> so we did that and went out for cheeseburgers and what did we do on Monday? Oh, I took the kids to Spirit Halloween. I've, I have true confession, I've never been to a spirit store <laughs> and it was an experience, that's for sure. So we did that on Monday. We tried to have some fun while the kids had a long weekend. So you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you. The sound is amazing. I love that. No, <laughs> Deanne, my dad was joking. Papa Pixie's probably watching live. Hi, Dad. He was like, you know, not too long ago, that pumpkin would have been heavier than him. So, <laughs> oh, goodness. I do have some um, show and tell from the kids and... Uh, I think that's all. There's not a ton of promotions going on this month, but I do want to do my normal spiel just so that you know um, what my host code is for the month and what my free gifts are. So this month's host code is QJ4BZXCA. That is a mouthful. If you'll please use that host code on any order with me under $150, I would appreciate that. Orders of $150 or more, don't use the host code because you will actually earn stamp rewards on those orders. You'll still qualify for my monthly free gift, but the free gifts this month are really good. The Amaryllis Abloom stamp set, you may have missed this set. It's in the back of the mini catalog. It is a host set, so it can only be purchased with stamp and reward. With stamp and rewards, orders of $150 or more, but since I pull all the orders together, I'm able to give that as a free gift. The Soft Pastels assortment, which I actually haven't ordered for myself yet, but this is what happens. I put it on my free gifts and then I got to have it too. So, and then those Silver and Clear Epoxy Essentials, which are awesome because you can color those with Stampin' Blends to match your project. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. So that's the scoop. Let me go ahead and flip the camera if I can remember how to do that. <laughs> I always forget. So many things to remember on a live stream. Quick sneak peek, here is the box we're making today, that beautiful, simply elegant specialty designer series paper. Let's do the kiddos show and tell. This is my son Nolan who just turned six in September. One of those three-in-one Lego sets. I think it goes from a Tyrannosaurus Rex to a Pterodactyl, and I don't remember what the third one is, but that's what he chose to share with you tonight. And then Lily is doing a Girl Scouts project. They're earning a badge, and I forget what the badge is for, but she needed to do um, some artwork. So this is her Halloween house. The Christmas catalog has already come out, Lala. So that came out in August, and if you want 
um, to, if you need a copy of that catalog, feel free to reach out to me at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail, and I'll get one in the mail to you. But this is her Halloween house, which I thought was super fun. I'm trying to show off the details there. Lily is eight, going on nine. So there's that. All right, impossible box. You know I love impossible boxes. I, I create them fairly often, and I am on a mission to get everybody to give it a try. I know it looks really complicated. It's not, I've tried to make it very easy to do. And this one actually holds the eight ounce Bath and Body Works lotion. Now I know I've had several requests for boxes for this size lotion bottle. I've got quite a few projects for the three ounce travel size. Um, so this one, this is the regular eight ounce, obviously the shower gel or the body lotion would fit. And this is how impossible boxes work. So they do look impossible, but it's basically a box and a lid in one. Now I was freaking out before the live because I was having a hard time getting that to work. This box is a pretty tight fit because it's such a big lotion bottle. We're actually using almost a full piece of eight and a half by 11. So um, this is what we're making, but I absolutely love this. And actually, my inspiration for this was actually the label of this. This is the White Pumpkin and Chai Body Lotion from Bath & Body Works. Smells divine. I think it's one of their fall scents. But I love the copper on the lid, and that just inspired me to look at my designer series papers, the specialty ones. And I pulled this one out because I don't believe it is on back order. It is in the warehouse. So, um... The stamp set you may recognize comes from, I think this is the stamp set I gave for Prize Patrol last week. It's the Little Delights stamp set. Great stamp set for all of our fall and winter holidays. Love the little images that go with it. This is a really fun set to work with. So I also paired it with the Painted Labels dies. Um, now the Sparkle of the Season, I don't think that's the name of the dies. That might be the name of the stamp set. That is back ordered, but that one would work too if you have that. It's got that really cool kind of swirly die cut, um, a couple of different options with that. So if you don't have painted labels, you could use that one if you have it in your stash. And then just the layering circles dies for that um, center sentiment. Now these brushed metallic dots I think are currently back ordered, but I know many of you have them. You can use lots of different alternatives here, but those will be back in stock soon. So that is, I love this with the copper lid. Sometimes I like to go to Bath & Body Works and just look at um, the colors and things they have on their labels. But that's how it works. So that the recipient has to slide this up to get it open and then this will come out. So very, very cool. I'm going to leave this out because I only have one of them. But let's jump into creating this. I do have a template for you. Um, all of the project measurements, details, a picture of the template and a shortened video tutorial will post to my blog on Friday. Um, so feel free to sit back and relax. I know many of you can't wait until my Friday post <laughs> to get to that. Um, but let me go ahead. I'm going to put my laptop on do not disturb. Let's do that. Okay. So this is a piece of basic gray and it measures eight and a half by 10 and three quarters. So all I did was on the long side on that 11 inch side, I just cut off a quarter of an inch. Okay. So then I'm gonna grab the Simply Scored here and we're gonna start on the eight and a half inch side. We are going to score this at two and a half, four, I was questioning myself there, two and a half, four, six and a half, and eight. Repeat those again, because I know some of you are writing these down, but again, these will be on my blog post on Friday. Two and a half, four, six and a half, eight. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and we're gonna score this at one and a half. Seven and three quarters. Then I like to flip the cardstock here because I want the score lines to go on the opposite side of the paper for these next two score lines. So eight and a half and nine and a quarter. Okay, so let me repeat that. One and a half. Seven and three quarters, flip your card stock, eight and a half, nine and a quarter. I'm gonna leave the Simply Scored out. I wanna come down, so I've got this in portrait. I'm coming down to the second, the second horizontal score line from the top. Now on this side of the paper, this is a valley score line. 
I want to turn that into a mountain. So really we're having it fold back like so. Okay, so we've got our two and a half inch section here on the left, our half inch section on the right. We've folded that backwards. Now I'm going to burnish this. It's just going to make it easier. Um, we're going to make a couple of tick marks. So I just did a quick burnish of that edge. With the Simply Scored, I've got the fold pushed up to the top of the Simply Scored. Again, two and a half here on the left. And I'm going to make tick marks at the following measurements. The name of that paper. It is Simply Elegant Norlene. It's this paper. I've got my paper swatch here, but it is a gorgeous paper. You've got gold foil and silver foil. Gold, <laughs> hold on a second. Copper, gold, and silver foil is what I meant to say. Basic black and basic gray. Beautiful paper. This is in the annual catalog. Giving the annual catalog some love here. So while this is folded back, I'm going to make a tick mark at three quarters of an inch. And I'm just taking the ball tip of my stylus, pressing that down right there at the top of the Simply Scored and the top of the paper. So three quarters, three and one quarter, four and three quarters and seven and one quarter. Let me repeat those again. Three and, sorry, three quarters, three and one quarter, four and three quarters, seven and one quarter, okay? Now we can put the Simply Scored back or away. I'm gonna turn it, now I've got the fold towards me. So the fold is here along the bottom. Taking my paper snips here, and I'm going to cut up each, while it's still folded, cutting up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line that we see. So cut, and I'm cutting through two layers of paper here. Now we also want to remove this little corner here. So I've got it still folded, but I'm going to come in and miter cut as well. Let me show you what I just did there. So see that little angled cut? We did that all in one fell swoop there. Okay, so we got rid of that, turning it back to here where we can see our tick marks. I am gonna bring in a template here. I'm gonna cut from the tick mark up into the right. So this is gonna go to where this score line meets the edge. So again, keeping that paper folded, tick mark to the score line. And we're basically in one fell swoop removing a larger triangle like that, okay? We're gonna do the same thing. So cutting up to the right, tick mark now to the next score line, like so. Now wait till when I open the paper, you'll see what we've done. This is the part that makes the impossible box much easier. And just work your way down to those tick marks. You're gonna do it four times. Yes, I'm cutting right in the middle of the score line, Deidre. All right, so you see that? Watch what happens when I open this. Oh, so easy, look at that. Okay, let me show you the template here. There is our template, okay? Now the template's a little bit smaller because it takes a full eight and a half by 11 width paper, so it's reduced in size, but that's what we just did. That's the trick to these impossible boxes is getting those pieces. Now I've seen tutorials before from many, many years ago where folks have used X-Acto knives. This is the easiest way because then you're just using your scissors and making the scissors do all the work, okay? Now I'm also gonna come in and miter cut in this top corner here. You'll see those on the template. Now what we can do is focus here on the, along the bottom and actually, yep, well, let's just go ahead and do that. We're gonna burnish Nope, I'm gonna fold and burnish now. <laughs> oh, sometimes my mind does, you know, different things. Um, I'm gonna next fold and burnish on the rest of the score lines. Now keep in mind the top two, this is in portrait, the top two we want to fold backwards. Remember we scored those on the opposite side of the paper from the rest of the score lines. So the top two fold backwards. Then this next one is going to fold forwards, or basically we're turning it into a, it was a valley score line, we're turning it into a mountain fold. Same thing on the bottom. Those are the easy ones to do. Okay, so we've got it kind of, if I turn it sideways, you can see the top two are mountain, valley, valley, but it depends on which side of the paper you're looking at. 
Valley, Valley, Mountain, Mountain. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, now for this next part, before we fold and burnish the vertical score lines, I'm gonna fold backwards first on that first horizontal score line from the top. That's really important because this is going to fold backwards onto itself. Okay, so that first score line, we folded it backwards. Now I can flip this over and fold and burnish, okay? Just remember, this is now folded over onto itself, so you just wanna take your time here when you fold and burnish these. We're basically just trying to train the paper to go where we want it to go. And this last one is easier because this is kind of all by itself. And this final short tab, we're just gonna fold onto itself here. Okay, so we've done all the folding and burnishing. Now we're gonna go along the bottom here. So we've got our folded backwards top the bottom along here, we're just gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line. I'm gonna remove this lower right corner as well and also miter cut that. So we took that away. Then cutting up each of these. like that. Now I'm going to come in, fold the big sections out of the way to isolate those little squares. Those are going to be our tabs. So I'm just going to come in and angle cut or miter cut those. I tried a number of different styles of boxes for this hand lotion. I had a request for the fold flat box that I had created for the uh, the three ounce and there just wasn't enough cardstock to work with so I scrapped that one and I tried another one with kind of a pinched in top and that didn't look so great so this is the third try and I'm happy with this one. It's going to take a little bit of work to break it in so that it's easy to close and I'll explain that when we get to it. So this is just about ready to put together but before we do that we're going to do designer series paper. So. I didn't write these measurements down, so here's hoping I remember them all. <laughs> all right, I'm missing two little pieces. Here they are. All right, so we have two pieces of Simply Elegant that measure two and a quarter by four and five eighths. Look at that shine, love that. So two and a quarter, four and five eighths. Two of those, if you had a directional pattern, you want that to be in portrait. Then I have two pieces that measure one and a quarter by four and five eighths. Again, portrait if you had a directional pattern. Two pieces that measure one and a quarter by two and a quarter. Landscape for these if you had a directional pattern. And then two that measure one and a quarter inches square. So one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Now let's start with the long ones, the biggest ones. And I'm just going to use, let's use a new glue bottle, so I'm not fighting with my glue. All right. Liquid glue is great for this. Now I'm going to put these down towards the bottom score line. We're going to do an eighth of an inch from the bottom and the sides. Okay, because this is actually going to, the lid is going to slide down. We don't want paper here adding any bulk to that. Okay, so I've got that right where I want it. So again, we are just about an eighth of an inch up from that bottom score line. And you'll see we've got this big gap here, but that's to leave room for the lid. Okay. Same thing on this next panel. It'll be pretty easy to see which panels go where. Then we've got our tall, skinnier ones. Oh, I love this paper, it's really pretty. 
This is great for, uh, I don't know if anybody's going to dinner parties this year, you never know, but this would be great as like a little host gift. I don't know how many years has it taken me to come up with a box for the eight ounce. <laughs> Those bigger bottles can be a challenge when you're working with cardstock. I just always try to avoid 12 by 12 because um, we can only purchase them in the color families. And so um, I'll use them if I need to, but now these pieces up top, remember this is folded backwards. We want to make sure that we're not adding it this side, but we're adding it when it's folded down. And these cute little squares. Now you can have fun with the paper. You can do multiple patterns from the pack. That would be really pretty. You can stamp your own patterns. Use what you have. All right. So we've got our eight pieces of designer series paper all laid down and ready to go. Now remember you want to have that gap, that gap here at the top that's going to save room for our lid to slide down. I'm going to then flip this over and fold on the second score line from the left. Okay. Now you only want to put glue on this long tab. We're not putting glue on this tab yet. That's going to be the very last one. It doesn't really matter Nita. I have, I have always used the smaller ball tip um, some recommend using the large ball tip for designer series paper and the small for cardstock. I've just always used the small. I don't, I don't give any love to the larger ball tip for some reason, but I don't think it necessarily matters. I know with the designer series paper, the larger ball tip can sometimes help prevent designer series paper from cracking. I haven't experienced that with Stampin' Up's designer series paper, but that is a recommendation that I've heard before. Um, so yeah, I always use the small one, but, um, probably I'm just a creature of habit. So I'm going to put the liquid glue right along this long tab. Again, we're leaving the short tab alone. So no glue here yet. Then when we fold this, we're just lining up this edge. Well, you're not really lining up anything. Um, you sometimes need to just make sure, cause again, it's folded back on itself, but then we can just press this down. And the score line should square that right up. Now with the liquid glue, if for some reason the paper is kind of fighting you and you need to slide it into place, you can go ahead and do that. You've got some time with that liquid glue. I'm just making sure that that's good and adhered. Okay. Now, again, we're going to leave the lid for last. We're going to focus on the bottom here. But you want to pay attention to where your seam is. So that's right here along this edge. This then is the back. So now your tabs are going to overlap by about a half of an inch. It's I normally would cut away the bulk here, but since this lotion bottle is pretty heavy, I didn't even mess with it. I just left them the way they were. So we'll put liquid glue on each of those tabs. And then liquid glue on that first or the front flap, I should say. Okay. So glue on tabs, this is the front flap. I'm gonna then fold the back flap, then the front lap. And because we're using liquid glue, I can press on the sides and the corners and get that all squared up along the bottom. Then I like to flip this over and grab the thing we're putting in the box, that lotion bottle, and just press from the inside. You could use your bone folder too, but usually just putting the item in there works really well. Now, this is the part where I want you to take a little bit of patience. This um, lotion bottle is, because it's rounded, this is a very tight fitting box. So I don't want you or the recipient to get frustrated. So we're gonna just start to break down our impossible box before we glue anything into place. We're gonna see how this goes on live. <laughs> um, I'm just basically dry fitting this. This tab is going to go right behind here and then you can just kind of press it into place. Now this is the part that makes me nervous. I should be able to lift it and close it. 
I do, Ava, um, be, just because of the fact that you get the wiggle room here. Um, and I just have found that the multi-purpose glue, I think, holds better. I haven't had any prop. Well, I haven't had any problems with the tear and tape coming off, but, um, you know, there's a little bit of, what do I want to say, the fibers or something to the tear and tape. I do love the tear and tape. There's a time and place for it, but for this box, I really like using the liquid glue. So do you see what I'm doing? I'm not, I'm trying not to squeeze it at all. Just pressing it now. Obviously this isn't lining up quite right yet, but I'm basically trying to break down the paper right here on the corners. Now most impossible boxes, you don't have to do this, but if, if only you all could come and feel this box, there's just the tiniest bit, you, don't, you can't see it on camera, but the tiniest bit of bulging of that bottle because I wanted to make sure that this fit in an eight and a half by 11. So I didn't have a whole lot of wiggle room here for the box. So this is actually, I think it's helping me out tonight because the last two versions of this box, I was like, it's not working. <laughs> Panic set in, but now that I'm crafting with y'all, I've totally calmed down, haven't I? <laughs> Brian's laughing at me. So I think we are in a position where we can go ahead and glue this down. So. Here's what I recommend. Go ahead and open the box. I'm gonna take liquid glue. I'm gonna put this on the tab, but I do not wanna go all the way up to the score line there because we do need a little bit of extra space. So I'm gonna put liquid glue, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch from that score line. I'm taking my time here, okay? So I'm not quite to the score line. I left about an eighth of an inch there. It should, Beth, the body wash, as long as it's in this shape bottle and it's the same eight ounces, yes. Both the lotion and the um, body wash, I believe, come in the same form factor. All right, so now I'm tucking that behind, okay? And then I'm gonna press it into place. Now the liquid glue is gonna help us here. I'm going to just kind of slide things into place. I don't wanna make it too tight, but I'm lining up this edge, trying to make those all look nice. And again, liquid glue will give us some wiggle room there. And then I'm gonna make sure that that's pressed into place. We just need to take our time with it. Tell the cardstock who's boss, is what I like to say. <laughs> but look how cool that top is. I've always done square impossible boxes and have finally branched out a few times into rectangular ones and I love them. I love any impossible box but it's just such a cool box and lid all in one, okay? So there's that. Yes, it's helping, it's working with me. Now, if you have a little bit of a gap, that is A-OK, -okay. don't let that bother you. That is actually a good thing because it'll make it easier to open and close this box. Your lotion is not going to fall out. It's in there nice and snug. And I just love the way that looks with those angles. How cool is that? Oh yeah, this one is probably the best of the bunch. I love it. All right, let's do some decorations here. Um, we again are gonna be using the Little Delights stamp set and the sentiment, you're such a blessing. We're gonna be using the painted labels dies and then the layering circles dies. So let's bring out this guy which still has some of the copper foil stuck in it because I cut this right before. And then I'm going to grab this circle. So coming from the smallest, one, two, three, four, if you start from the smallest, okay? That makes sense. And then I think it means five if you start from the largest. So let's go with four. <laughs> that one is going to fit the sentiment, you're such a blessing, okay? Let's see if I can find my, got my ink. I just re-inked my memento. Um, while I have this out, I'm just gonna show you what I do when I re-ink. This is a little bit different than our firm foam pads. Um, I re-ink this, uh, the Memento Tuxedo Black, probably the most of all of my ink pads because it is a felt ink pad. The name of the designer series paper, Rosemary, was simply elegant, okay? I do, Deanna. Um, it's a new find for me. I think I shared it during my top 10 favorite um, organization ideas, but yes, I have them all in that. And if um, they are a double, 
let me show you before oh look at me i'm gonna make get ink everywhere if i can't fit them all on a five by seven then i just put two of them in there so that's two of the stamp and storage magnet cards sandwiched together and these vinyl pockets hold them really well i've got them linked on my favorites page at the paperpixie.com favorites and these are the I, it's true love. I am super happy with this. Um, I've tried a whole bunch of different pockets. These are easy to get. They're fairly inexpensive. It is a C-Line vinyl job ticket holder. So I've got it linked on my favorites page. Let me see if I can pop that up really quick. Where did I put my mouse? This is my favorites page. Thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. C-Line vinyl job ticket holders. They are um, size to fit a five by eight inch piece of paper, those job tickets. I actually trim mine down to seven and a quarter. So from this edge, seven and a quarter, and it perfectly fits the stamp and storage five by seven magnet cards. They're not quite uh, five inches tall. I think they're about four and three quarters. So there's that. Let's see. They are Cindy, and I actually just moved it to the home page um, so people could find it easier. The Stampin' Blends labels, if you just go to the paperpixie.com, in the Happening Now section, just below my introduction, you'll see a link to the Stampin' Blends labels. Those I have those available for purchase. They are a print-yourself digital download, great for labeling your blends. And while you're asking that, I might as well show you. I'm not used to having the microphone on me. I'm like trying to turn my head to the other mic. This is what they are. They uh, make it really easy to find your blends and uh, or what color they are. And I just use a 3 8 inch circle punch. So that is available at thepaperpixie.com. You'll find a link right on the homepage. Okay. All right, let me get a piece of, I've got a piece of basic white and then I've got copper foil. Let me get a piece of that. We're gonna do some stamping and some die cutting. So, before I get sidetracked, my Memento ink refill, I just go zigzag with a gentle squeeze back and forth this way, and then back and forth this way. Okay, and I actually do store these ink pads upside down. I just put the lid on, and when I store them, I turn them upside down like that, okay? a little label on the side so I can see them. So let's go ahead and stamp. You're such a blessing. I actually drew on this. Oh, per that's a great idea, Ananda. You can color right on the circles with your stamp and blends. You can really see them. Perfect. All right, then we'll go ahead and stamp that. And a nicely inked ink pad gives you a really clean stamp. Or stamped image. All right, let me get post-it notes. I'm gonna grab the circle die here, and of course my ink pad is probably too saturated, but I did want to show you how I re-ink. So I'm just using a post-it note to hold that circle in place. Let me pop out. Um, I have the foil still sitting in here. I'm just using my take your pick tool. There we go. I think that's all out. All right, so I'm going to bring in the big boss. And if I'm strategic here, let's go ahead and trim this off. Make some room. Now, I don't know about you, but my um, plates are well loved. And so I try not to run the foil through because the plates will leave marks on the foil. You could use junk mail or something like that to try to prevent um, those cut marks from transferring to your foil. Run those two through. Get these guys out. All right. Got that guy looking good. <clears throat> I'm throwing stuff around. 
It's a wonder why I, how I find anything in here, right? <laughs> oh goodness. All right, let's see. This um, particular die holds onto the cardstock really well. So just take your time, use those little ejection holes. So Denise, I would recommend um, either cutting your foil down to size or um, putting a piece of junk mail over the top before you run it through and that should prevent, the texture should stick to the, um, the junk mail instead of the foil. The size lotion is the eight ounce from Bath and Body Works. All right, so we've got those two. I'm gonna use my liquid glue. See, just a little bit of the stitching there. Great idea, Janet. Piece of printer paper. We all got a lot of that laying around, don't we? All right, so there's that. Let me grab dimensionals. I don't like to skimp on dimensionals. I do a whole bunch. The refill um, is available at Stampin' Up Lala. It's the Memento Tuxedo Black Refill. You can find that at thepaperpixie.com slash shop. All right, pull the backing off my dimensionals. And then let's make sure we're on the front of our box here. Where's my seam? There's the seam, all right. Such a great sentiment to give somebody a really nice gift. And then the piece de resistance. I'm gonna grab one of my brushed metallic adhesive backed dots and then we'll add this to, I'm gonna put it right down there. Just a little bit of bling that matches that beautiful copper foil. So there is our, what do we wanna call this? Simply Elegant Impossible Box, size to fit, an eight ounce, let me pull that out so you can see what that looks like next to these beautiful boxes. Love this, this is my inspiration here. Now you've got the leaves, perfect for the fall. I think they still have this fragrance. I just picked it up a week or so ago. So love this paper, Simply Elegant. Let me show you that paper again for those of you that joined us a little bit late. This is the beautiful Simply Elegant Designer Series paper. It's a specialty with copper, gold, and silver foil throughout. Great neutral colors. Yes, Laura, it's, it's not a Christmas only. It is the mini catalog, which used to be called the holiday catalog. So Laura, it's the one that launched in August and goes through December. The August to December 2021 mini catalog. That's the catalog that has all of the special Christmas and Halloween and Thanksgiving. And what am I forgetting? I think that's the majority of the holidays that are in that catalog. So there is that. All right, let's jump into some prize patrol and then I'll let you guys get on your way. So prize patrol, if you are new here, all you need to do is in the comments, whether you are watching um, on Facebook or YouTube, this is for the live audience, uh, leave the comment hashtag prize patrol. You uh, make sure you add the hashtag, no spaces, make sure you spell it correctly to be entered for a chance to win. I am going to choose two winners. I'm excited about tonight's prize patrol to win the Delicate Dahlia's stamp set. This is the celebration set that was free with a hundred dollar purchase. So beautiful, um, distinctive stamp set. Love this one. This I think was probably my favorite um, celebration set. So let me go ahead and share. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Let's do this. I'm gonna add to stream. Let me flip to me and I will give you guys a few moments while we wait for the, the entries to come in. Just a reminder of my host, code, my host code for the month. You can always find that at thepaperpixie.com slash host code or at the top of the page at thepaperpixie.com. That's always my current host code. Please use that host code on any order under $150 with me. Orders of $50 or more will be eligible to choose a free gift from me. And let's see, I think that's about it. 
We do have an early release product bundle coming out in early November. So I will be showing you that as we get closer and I will be live again next Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to go ahead and choose our first winner. Look at all those entries come in. All right, good luck to you. Get my post-it notes here. Love seeing your names and smiling faces come across the screen. Kathleen Williams, congratulations. Just writing your name down. Yay. Kathleen, to claim your prize patrol, you want to visit the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. Let's go ahead and choose winner number two. Meyer, congratulations. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Awesome. All right, Terry and Kathleen, congratulations to both of you. Again, you'll want to claim your prize patrol at the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. Let me bring this off here. Congratulations, Terry and Kathleen. I'm excited to get that. You'll also, or to get those in the mail too, you also get a handmade card for my stash as well. So thank you all for joining me live. And thank you to those of you who have watched on the replay. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 214. Thanks everybody, have a wonderful and blessed week and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care, bye.